Okay, this is a theoretical question that uh, just kind of rises in thinking about arcs and circles and relevant to the idea of a dense set of points on the circle. <clears throat> Not a very practical idea, but a theoretical idea which could have unpredictable practical applications. I can think of a few of those, but I'm not going to mention them. Okay, just here's a theoretical question that is a really good thing to think about and to understand. It's kind of advanced, okay, from the perspective of somebody uh, up through the pre-calculus level and even into the calculus level to an extent. Um, so, uh, if, if you're at that level and can't understand what the question is about, um, it's worth an effort to think about it. It's not worth abandoning mathematics because you don't understand it or you can't prove it. Uh, if you're a mathematics major in your junior year and can't prove this thing, um, then you're probably not in a very rigorous course of study. Um, or maybe you just haven't advanced far enough. If you're a graduate student in mathematics and can't think about and answer this question, uh, you're not in a real graduate program, and I apologize for having to say that. Um, that. That's not necessarily true. might just be that you have a hard time thinking about these things, but you're in a graduate program where you uh, think about other sorts of things, and maybe you have a very good program, you're very good in it, but I can't imagine uh, a graduate student in a real graduate program who hasn't been exposed to ideas like this or is unable to think about them. Of um, course, there are a lot of things that I can't imagine, so take that with a grain of salt. Okay, well, anyhow, here we are. Um, question is, will multiples of a randomly chosen arc necessarily form dense, a, set, a, a dense set of points on the circle? <coughs> now, let me explain what I mean by that. Okay, here's an arc, a randomly chosen arc. Now, there's a number chosen with this arc. The number will be uh, this arc as a multiple of the circumference of the circle. Obviously, this will be a multiple by a number less than one since this arc is less than the circumference of the circle, the, the length of this arc. And when I say the arc, I should say uh, To be very specific, the arc length of this arc is an irrational multiple of the circumference of the circle. Okay, well, if this is an irrational multiple of the circumference, and it's necessary that if I have a randomly chosen point on the circle, uh, since there are more irrational points than there are rational points, and since there are so many more irrational numbers than there are rational numbers, it is mathematically impossible that you would choose a rational point. And if you choose a point, okay, not uh, if you put your compass down and choose a number that's feasibly uh, close, and I, that's not a good way to say that, uh, uh, let's just stick with the idea that uh, you have a randomly chosen point. Out of all the infinitely many points here, you choose one. Uh, really impossible to do that, but if you could, that would be the case. So what we can then assume is that this arc is an irrational multiple of the circumference. Now what I want to do is I want to take multiples of this arc. So I'm going to spread my compass out to the length of this arc, and I'm going to move along the circle, and I'm fudging a little bit because actually I'm going to set the compass just a little differently. And it doesn't really match this arc anymore, but we'll pretend that it does. So here we go. Okay, so here is one multiple of the arc. That's double the arc. Then I move from here to here and mark the point, and that's triple the arc. Now, obviously, it's impossible to accurately mark a point because you would have 
to have infinite precision. And in the real world here, we're dealing with atoms, okay? And atoms are not infinitely precise. They don't even stay in the same point. They vibrate and all that stuff. Uh, okay, but anyhow, we continue marking equal arcs around the circle, okay? So here we go. Okay, so we've got all these equal arcs, and we assume infinite precision. And we don't come around quite to the circumference of the circle. You can prove that if this arc is an irrational multiple of the circumference, then it's impossible that we'll come around to that to, to, to the uh, starting point on the circle by marking arcs along the circle. Not only that, but if we continue marking arcs, so I'm going to continue moving around the circle, and I mark this point completing another arc from this point, and then continue doing that all the way around the circle. And I haven't actually constructed these points, but I get in the next trip around the circle these orange marks that come up a little bit short in each case of the white marks I made in the first time around the circle. Then I continue from here and I get to the yellow mark here. And then I continue making yellow marks in my third circuit around the circle. And I haven't marked these very accurately, but you get the idea. Then from here, uh, I get this point, and then the blue points in my fourth time around the circle. Well, it's obvious that I can continue this. Okay, so the question is, well, if I continue this, could it not be possible that I would eventually land on this point before, you know, as these, as these points continue to digress back here. Well, if I'm actually constructing them with atoms and so forth, it's certainly possible that I might land on the same atom that I had here. It'd be pretty unlikely, but it's not impossible. But if we have infinite precision, it turns out that it's not. And you can prove this using the properties of rational and irrational numbers. So we can establish, first, that I'll never land on the same point, okay? And then, can we establish that given any point, I'll always land, uh, given any point and any small distance, is it necessary that I will always land within that small distance of the given point? Okay, well, I'm going to continue this. I've posed the problem, and I'm going to make a few of these ideas a little more precise, uh, state them a little more um, clearly, maybe. I think I've stated them fairly clearly, but I'm going to write them down and give you some guidance on how you might begin to think about this situation.